Hello, my name is Ali and I have the pleasure of introducing Stuart Patterson, a squatter of Bairn Rhymes. As a pupil of Troqueer Primary in Dumfries, I have been lucky to see Stuart's poetry when he helped the school during lockdown. Here is the poem I wrote inspired by lockdown and Stuart's poetry. It's called, I Want It. I want it, it is me fair. I can't get back QOS fitty at the Pammy. I can't even visit my papa or my granny. And when he gan to Hamden for the Urals in June, or when we scun the Sassanax, sing a happy tune. I wanna hear a sleepier with all my pals from school, play Heidi, Heaters and Runners, that will all guy cool. I'd like to go to France on a bra and bonny plane, or oud Ricky to see my cousins on a tackety thrang and train. It's heard it's tough, I'm scared, I'm putting out my hair. Tell me please someone when we or this be o'er. Now over to Stuart, enjoy. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. First of all, a massive well done to Ali Fetraqueer Primary School there. That was a cracking piece of poetry, so well done that man. My name is also Ali, I'm Ali Heather. I'm speaking to you today for Dundee. We'll get to our guests short, just shortly, but what I want to say, as well as welcome you in to today's event at the Big Dog Children's Book Festival, is invite you to get involved. If you're watching this on YouTube, on the website, or on Facebook, you can put in the comment section anything you like, any questions you have, any queries, and they'll pop up on my screen, and I can put them to Stuart himself at any point in today's discussion. So before we go any further, I'd like to invite everyone that's watching, type something into the comments box. Tell us where you're watching, Faye. Tell us your names. Tell us if you're watching at school, if you're watching at home, if you're watching on your Todd. Just fire in a few hellos, and that'll get the conversation rolling. Today's event is brought to you by Bailey Gifford and Dumfries and Galloway Council's Education and Learning. Uh, the, today's book, The Squat of Bairn Rhymes by Stuart Patterson and all the other books from the uh, Big Dog Children's Book Festival are available on the website. That is bookshop.wigtownbookfestival.com. So make sure when you are buying any of the great books you're hearing about over this series of events, you buy them through the website. So, as Ali so wonderfully introduced there, our guest today is Stuart Patterson. He's a tremendous poet who writes all sorts of different subjects and all sorts of different materials. He's also very keen on Scots language activism and getting Scots and poetry out there into schools and communities. Recently, he was BBC Scotland's poet in residence. While he was there, he produced this incredible poem. It's called Snowbreaker. Scots is a marvellously rich poetic language of the everyday becoming extraordinary. We make words for what we know, and up here we know a lot about weather, especially snow. There's a well-known debate about whether or not Inuits have 50 words for snow, However, it's less recognised that the Scots language has an incredible 421 snow-related words and expressions. I'm the great snowbreaker who gars the hail-haired shift, makin' way again ilk funic crumping through ilk yowden drift. My jacket's stitched with flaggies, the snail winds my breath, my een burn through the flindrican, the brew and the hooves my graith. In a blind drift, aiblins you'll see me, snoot doon and maglin awa, jealot and funert, solid and thrown as a fecht a thought cranrook and snaw. The minute it sneezles I'm thinking, o oh, fethels and fuchters and steed. O oh, scouther and pouther and driffle, I've a dictionary of snow in my heat. Scots is one of Scotland's three remaining indigenous languages, along with Gaelic and English. It's a Germanic language, but it has many other influences and a written tradition going back several hundred years to when it was the official language of the borough and royal court. 
It was, and, and still is in some rural parts of Scotland, the language of agriculture, fishing, weather and landscape. Nowadays, it's officially recognised by Brussels and Westminster as a minority or regional language under European Charter. In the 2011 census, over one and a half million Scots identified as Scots speakers. And the yin what brings you onward through the oorlich and chittering nicht. No stopping for spitter or scalf or smur till I see my hail haired richt. I'm the great snawbreaker, who max the path for all, the lamb, the yow, the muckle tup, I'm the woolly pluch o' the snaws. I'm the michty ram o' winter, was neither blate nor nesh, the sherpa o' the sheep world, the snow ghost made o' flesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ali, and thank you, we Ali, we Ali and Big Ali, the two Alleys. I'm Stuart, Stuart Patterson. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in today. Thanks very much to all the Wayans that are watching, all the teachers that are watching, and everybody else that are watching. Cheers, and it's great to be part of the Big Dog Festival for Wigton Book Festival. Thanks to them for asking me to speak to you today. As Ali and we, Ali, have already said, I am a Scots speaker and a Scots writer. And Scots is one of our three languages in Scotland that we speak every day um, in different bits of Scotland. We all speak English. Absolute loads of us speak Scots. And aye, a few, a few people speak Gaelic as well. And I grew up speaking Scots and I knew writing Scots as well. And as we Ali said, and that was a great poem, by the way, we Ali. Oh, it was magic at Fetra Queer Primary. It was great to work with them. Um, hello to all the other schools that are watching on the day as well. Um, I had this book published recently called A Squatter of Bern Rhymes. Now, a squatter is just a whole load of things. Some of you might have heard the word wheen. If there's a wheen of things or a squatter of things, it means there's a whole load of things. And... There's a hail squatter of Bairn Rhymes in this book. Bairn Rhymes, Bairns, Wains. Bairn Rhymes are poems written for younger, younger folk. But I like to think that these poems are for everybody. They're not just for wee Wains, they're for big Wains. Because how often do you think about your mammy and your daddy or your older brother and sister and think to yourself, oh, they're just as much a Wain as I am. In fact, they're worse. So we're all Wains, really. When I'm speaking to you, and I'm going to read you a few poems out of Squatter of Bairn Rhymes as well, I hope you might have your pen and your paper or your mobile or your tablet handy, and you can maybe write down some notes, maybe write down your favourite Scots words that you hear, or Scots words that you hear that you don't know the meaning of. And you can ask them later on, or you can write a few lines and poems, wee rhymes or whatever, or even stories while I'm speaking to you and while you're listening. That would be absolutely brilliant. And I know that this is being recorded. So later on down the line, when teachers are maybe showing it in the classroom again, you'll get another chance to write your own wee poems, your own wee bear rhymes. And in the book, at the back actually, there is a wee section that says, write your own bear rhyme here. And as far as I can, this is the only book that I've got certainly that I've seen where you can actually add to it. So although it's my book, the minute that you start writing something in it in your own wee poems in Scots, it becomes your book as well. So I'll start by reading you a couple of wee poems um, about beasties, animals, wee craters, things that we like, sometimes things that we don't like. And if there's any words in here I think you might know Ken or no, then... I'll point that out before we start. Now, this one is about something that I'm guy fear to. I'm awfully fear of these things, these wee beasties. They've got eight legs. Sometimes they're awfully big. Sometimes they're guy black. And sometimes they just skate across the carpet in front of you. And that's a spider or a speeder. And an old Scots word for a spider is ettercap. 
and Ettercarp. And you also, if anybody's ever read The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, it talks about Ettercarps and Ettercarps and that. So you need to kind of think what an Ettercarp is. <clears throat> Winter dikes are things that you put your clays on in the house to dry. In England, they call it a maiden, a clothes horse. And I think it's important that you know a word. And coming towards the end of the poem, it's quite important, oos, O-O-S-E. And oos is just a bit of fluff you get on your clays or on your cell. So this poem is called Ettercarp, and it's a true story. And I hope it's no happened to you because, jings, I was guy fear when this happened to me. Ettercarp. Yin night is off to sleep I dropped. I thought that maybe an etter clap was in a blow my bra warm sheet and skitting an hour my toasted feet. I woke up feared, but can I glad that no such thing was in my bed, but as I shut my een, guess what? I felt a tickling on my foot. You've never seen a man alive could loop so high and duck and dive. You mean it in the next you out and shouting like a big galoot. I'm bringing into everything. The war, the winter dikes, the bin and try as madly as I might. I can't even the bedroom light. You can. It's thin right daft and rang when something just Two inches long can make you sweat and hold your breath and frighten you near half to death. There's something though it does not reckon, for I he got a secret weapon. It's muckle, terrible, and affy, the etter cap destroying baffy. Ten minutes later, maybe mayor. I find my baffy by the chair. Switch on the licht, dick doon my brew, must pull myself together now. Ten minutes later, maybe mayor, my baffy poised, I'm nearly there, I've been the bed and wit at hods, and praying to baffy blessing gods. An hour later, maybe mayor, I'm ready now. I'm nearly there and whoosh, I burrow the bed clays back and nearly here, air attack, bang, bang and bang again, just yin some pulverizer it to mints and skelp and belt and hurl abuse. Until I see it's only us. Two hours on, all warm and harped, I laugh. <laughs> about the etter cap that was not in my bed at all and sleeping barrel towards the wall all oh, cosy kugel snug and bean a stert to shut my tired in but just afore my sleep comes on what's yon that's tickling at my horn and that happened to me and I hope it's no happened to you it can be a guy scary thing. My next poem is about another wee beastie, and it's yin that you see every day, whether you're walking to school or donnering back home. And this is about a wee pal I've got called Shug. Now in Scotland, different and names are English. We call somebody called Hugh, for instance, in Scotland, you would call them Shug. Or James or Jim, you'd call Jimmy. And this is about my wee pal. Shug. Now, Shug is the your normal wee pal, and you see them all the time in the trees and the branches. And he's just, well, I'll come to that. And if you don't ken the word keek, if you keek on something well, that's, yes, what you do when you go to the toilet. <laughs> My pal Shug is off a wee. He keeks on windies and stays in a tree. He hooks for his dinner, richt in the grun, and swallies hail whatever he's fun. He wears nae clays, nae socks, or boxers. Likes a good pook, or in his oxters. His hoose is made on nocht but wood. His singing's braw, 
and he's fleeing's good. I'm sure he's all ken, my pal, shug. My feathery pal, a toty we spug. And a spug is a Scots word for a sparrow or a sparrow. And there's plenty of sparrows everywhere just now, as I'm sure you can, especially at this time of year, hiking about for their dinner on the ground. Now, I hope you're taking a note of some words here. And um, aye, somebody's asked if I could have a shout out for Amesfield Primary. Hello, Amesfield Primary. How's it going? Hope you're all grand and keeping yourself safe and well and starting to write a few wee poems down as I speak and maybe a few questions as well and your own favourite Scots words because I think that's important. Now, I'm going to read you a poem that the BBC asked me to write a few years ago and I'm sure every year a lot of you will watch Children in Need. And I, wrote, I was asked to write this poem about Children in Need and you'll kind of be full of pudsy, the bear. And I thought, I'd write a poem about bears, because who does they like bears? Well, teddy bears especially, but maybe the real thing, a bit close up, no so much. So this is a poem about bears, and it's called Bears. There are bears in the world who are black and are brun. There are bears who climb trees and hang upside down. There are bears who are fricksome and bears who are bra. Some bears live in woods and a few live in snow. There are bears in America, bears in Peru, who love marmalade pieces and wear coats of blue. There are bears on your telly and bears who are super, like Yogi and Fozzie and Sooty and Rupert. And a bear in a big blue hoose, and Baloo, and Kung Fu Panda, and Winnie the Pooh, and rare bears, and care bears, and bears wear gummy, and bears wear crabbit, and bears wear funny. There are bears, there are bears, there are bears everywhere, for the yin on your bed, to the yin in your chair. The bears, where you coogle and kiss with delight, the bears who look over you into the night. The bears you'll take with you wherever you flit. The bears who'll stay with you, no matter what. But let's hear a shout for yon rarest o breeds, who's geared out his whole life to bairnies in need. Who thinks no to gun when the going gets tough, when wheeling up hills or cowpin and shucks, all clarty and kelpit, with feet wet and smelly, who smiles and way bears it each year on the telly. The bear, who stands up for the wains, cause he must do. The felly and yelly, the bear, who is pudsy. Another wee creature that a lot of people don't like, that you sometimes find all in a bit water, sometimes you'll find them in your toilet or in your bath, and that's a slater, and they live under wood as well, and in dark places, and a slater's a wood louse, and I've got a pal that's dead fear of slaters, so I wrote this poem for them. A kludgy, by the way, is a word to use in Glasgow especially, for a toilet, and your shanks are your legs. Slater. On the flare of my cludgy, I found a slater. Is they there? Ten minutes later. I'm feared to speeders and alligators, but more than them, I'm feared to slaters. I'll scalp and I'll leather, I'll stamp, but nay mater, it seems that there's no way to kill a slater. I'll whack and I'll whummel, I'll belt and I'll batter. I'll cover it in shampoo and fling it in water, and just when I'm sure that the slater is dead, it shiggles its shanks and starts wiggling its head. It's made out of armour, it's all as the hills, it's ancient and scary and can be killed, and I'm still looking for it, I hail two hours later, and I'm no hair my bath, till I can, there's no slater. So I hope you're still 
scribbling away there, putting some words down, stir up your A V poems, getting into your Scots and putting down your favourite Scots words to write about what it is that you know, what you like, maybe what you're fear to, what you love, who you love, what you love eating, where you like going, any of the kind of things. And that's the great thing about poetry is you can write anything you like about anything you like. And because Scots is its own language, don't worry about how to spell it. Just write it down as you would say it or as you would hear it. Eh? Don't worry about spelling. Don't let your teacher tell you any different. Spell it as you like. My next poem is one that I wrote for somebody really, really special to me. And it's about my mommy. And I hope that we all think this of our mommies. And I wrote it in Mother's Day, and it's called Ma Wee Mammy. Ma Wee Mammy is the bravest wee mammy. She doesn't greet her wench when her leg gets gammy. She just gets to work with a duster or a shammy. Ma Wee Mammy is the bravest wee mammy. And my wee mother is the hardiest wee mother. And a stishy or a fight, she'll no stop her swither. She'll tell you what's what and she'll clap your heads together. My wee mother is the hardiest wee mother. And my wee ma is the smartest wee ma. She kens just about everything, but there's no way she's a blaw. Her heads eye in a book and what she does not kens hee-haw. My wee ma is the smartest wee ma. And my wee mammy is this smashingest wee mammy. I'm telling you, I'm lucky, pure fortuitous and jammy, that my ma, my mother, mammy, is the very cat's pyjamas. And if you say oh different, then we're gonna hear a rammy. My wee mammy is the best wee mammy in the world. And so is yours. So that was a wee poem about my mum. I'm going to read you two or three more, and this is one I hope you relate to. It's about a wee filly I know called Bobby, and maybe like a few of you listening in here, his mum and dad bought him an absolutely top of the range, brilliant mobile phone. And a few weeks later, he dropped it, and it went into a million bits. So this is what happened. The lobby is the hallway of your house. This is called Bobby in the Lobby. I had a pal cried Bobby. He got off a lewd and gobby when his folks bought him a moby that cost over a hundred quid. He hardly spoke with Bobby, Yancey's folk, folks bought him don moby. It was mere than just a hobby, looking at it's all he did. He was never off a Snapchat, TikTok, Tumblr, YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and all that. Bobby thought was awfully good. But Yindi, poor wee Bobby, went his full length in the lobby and fell wrecked on top of his moby that broke into 50 bits. His time consuming hobby is now sweeping out the lobby, paying his folks back for the moby that cost their a hundred quid. So that's a wee story about Bobby and the lobby. And that's the thing about poems, is that a lot of the time we write them as we say them, because they're stories. We're telling folk about what we think and things that we care about, things that we know about. And things that other folk might know, Ken, and we're trying to tell them something in a way that's entertaining and fun. And it does not always have to rhyme. And if it does, that's fine. Oh, see what I did there. And if it's in Scots, all the better, because Scots is a great language, I feel, for storytelling and for making things rhyme and for making things entertaining and not just funny, but holding people's attention and making them listen or log in. That's your log, by the way. Know your ear. And here's a wee poem called Space. And I think every time I look up into the sky, I think this, and maybe you think it as well, especially at night, when it's all black and you're just seeing the stars. Space. 
The universe is long and wide. It has no bottom, top or side. When did it start? When will it finish? Thinking of it makes me squeamish. You better thought a wee bit of deep thinking there, because sometimes it pays, I think, to think about all the things that are round about you, especially now when we're all, a lot of us maybe haven't been at school for a while and we've been at home a lot and we're spending a lot of time maybe thinking about things and I think this is a really, really good time to be writing poems and it doesn't matter whereabouts in Scotland, by the way, you comfy or outside Scotland. We speak different in bits of Scotland, different dialects. I stay in Galloway just up the Colven coast in a wee village near Balbiti. And I've worked in loads and loads of schools all in Scotland in the years. And we all speak Scots, or we almost all speak Scots, and we speak in different dialects, and we sometimes have different ways of saying things. For instance, if you live up where I come from, and, or, uh, sorry, well, some people come from, I originally come from Ayrshire, a town called Kilmarnock, best fit my team in the world. Well, I think so. Um, up there, if we were tired, we would say we were wabbit. No rabbit, but wabbit. W-A-B-B-I-T. Down here in Galloway, you would say you were hattered. And up there, you would say something was good, whereas in Dumfries, you might say it was good. So there's different ways of saying things, but they're all right. They're all the right way of saying it. They're all Scots. They're just different dialects in the same language. I'll read you this wee poem, which is about the perps of the body. And it's about all the Scots names for perps of the body. And if you're watching this on playback or even now, feel free to join in. Um, and you can, when I point at what I'm pointing at, that that's the Scots name for it. So this is called Perps of the Body. This is your neb. This is your mouth. And these are your lugs at the side or your pow. This is your brew. And these are your in. Some folks are blue and others are green. These are your chacks. They're as red as an apple. And then I blow them is your chin and your thrapple. And this is your horn. At the end of your arm, you can make it a neave if you want to cause harm. And these are your lunzies. I bend them, your wame. Some folks are muckle, and others ain't in. These are your shanks in the middle. Your naps, your fits at the bottom, your hurties at the top. And in a blow all are your blood and your veins. And in a blow them, just a rickle of veins. I'll finish up reading you this wee poem and hopefully you'll have been writing a few things there as I've been talking to you. I hope you've been enjoying yourself and I hope you've been enjoying, and been enjoying listening to me. And I'm looking forward to maybe talking to some of you after I've finished reading this poem. But this poem, I think, is quite important because it's about how Scots itself. It's about how we speak. Now, I'll bet, like me, when I was a, when I was a, a young person, not that long ago, all right, maybe a few years, I get told off. I get told off for sometimes using Scots words in the way I spoke. And, say, and people would say, oh, you need to speak proper English and you stop speaking slang or dialect. Well, Scots is not slang. Scots is not dialect. Scots is the way you speak. And it's a proper, proper language, as the wee film showed earlier. Um, and I think this poem is one that is very, very important to me because I grew up speaking like this and I write like this now. And it's part of who I am. It's part of who I am. Part, part of who, who I'm are. Um, as my Scots and my language and it'll be the same for so many of you so don't let people tell you that how you're speaking or what you're saying is wrong it's right and it's Scots and this is the way you speak 
The way you speak, the words you use are closer to you than your clays. The way you speak, the words you use are paired to you for logs to taze. The way you speak, the words you use, no matter what your voice up says, is proper Scots and bra and fine. It's no bad English, no a grind. The way you speak, the words you use, that come out for your gub mace days, they are no slang, no dialect. They're ours, they're yours, they're Scots. Respect. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you managed to write a few things in yourselves. Cheers. Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. That was smashing. That was really, really an enjoyable way to spend a half hour on a on a lockdown afternoon. I thought we'd give uh, Abdi watching. So the Bairns at Amersfield Primary and Abdi else that's tuning in a wee minute to digest what they've been hearing, to hey, look at their notes, and if their teacher or parent or whoever's sitting alongside them wants to pit into the comments, if you've got a favourite Scots word, let us ken what it is. If you've got a wee line of Stuart's poetry that you really enjoyed, pit it in there. Well, Stuart, if you didn't mind, I've got a couple of things I'd like to ask you myself. You yeah. had you had that smashing poem about uh, Te Mami, about kind of Scots mammies. That obviously resonated with me. But I did notice in your book, A Squatter of Bairn Rhymes, the dedication in the front of the book is Te Ma'ain Mither Mima and to all the women who are inspired and inspire us still. Can you tell us a wee bit of, um, did Mima kind of, help give you a foundation in all these rhymes and poetry? Well, that's my mammy. <clears throat> my mammy stays up in Kilmarnock, and her name's Mima. J now, Mima is short for Jemima. Um, no a name you hear so often nowadays, but I think it's a lovely name. My mum is now 91 years old. Still in the go. She's got all her marbles. She's got everybody else's marbles for by. And when I was growing up, <clears throat> She said to me, right, that way you speak poem, Ali. She said to me, don't let MD tell you off at the skill or the skill or wherever. Don't let them tell you off how you speak. You should be pretty. It makes you who you are. It makes us Scottish. It makes us Scots. <clears throat> Pardon me. So Mima, my mum, very much is still important to me. And she's, Ken, how we go to school and we hear a teacher and then we leave the school I feel like I've been a teacher since before I went to school and long after I finished the school and I've still got that teacher. So she's dead, dead important to me. She's taught me loads. Smashing. Stuart, we hear our first question in for the oh. audience and that is a question for Orla. So uh, Orla, first of all, says her favourite Scots word is puddock, which is a belter. Puddock. Uh, Aye. Lovely, Ian. Um, in fact, there's an old pair of Dundee, there's a quarry near me in Dundee, which is cried the puddocky, because that's where all the puddocks bide. So it's an old quarry uh, in the woods. Uh, um, so uh, I, let's use the old Scotland, I think. So Orla asks, when did you start writing in Scots? And does it get easier the more you do it? Well, Ali, that's a, re that's a really good question for, for Orla, I have to say that when you, well, when I first started going to school 10 million years ago, <laughs> we, we heard the odd wee Scots poem, maybe once a year on Burns Night. And what we have to remember is, aye, that's how Rabbi, Rabbi Burns spoke and wrote maybe a couple of hundred years ago. But we speak different now, but we still speak in Scots. And it's, aye, it's still Scots, but it's modern Scots as well. Mm. Um, so I grew up speaking Scots in the house. And when I went to school, I was told that I couldn't use words like spug or puddock or hame or oot or we even. You must say little, not we. No, we say we because I'm a Scottish, not Scots, that's how we talk. So I, when you go, when you used to go to school sometimes um, and, you know, you would be told, not just tell ah, sometimes you get the belt. If there's any Wayne's watching, don't know about the belt, ask some of the older folk about that. I have to say that 
that doesn't happen so much now. I work in schools all the way through Scotland and there's so many brilliant teachers, courses and even qualifications in Scots language. So I started at what fell was knee high to a spug, just a wee way in. And I only started writing on it really properly, maybe when I was in my 20s, because I was not quite sure how to spell it. But now, and you'll have this in the schools, guys, now we have lots of Scots dictionaries to look up online as well. The Dictionary of the Scots Language, DSL, for instance, you've got actual books um, of Scots, loads and loads of books of poems and stories and stuff in Scots by so many different writers. So if you're not sure about how to spell it, write it down anyway and then get somebody to look it up for you or look it up yourself. It's, there's loads and loads of resources that we didn't have when I was growing up. So this is why it's so great to be doing it now. Bye. So I'm going to nail you down to the second part of Orla's excellent question. So you've answered the first part, but she was also spearing at you. Um, does it get easier the mayor you date? Does it get easier? Because, Ken, <laughs> when you first sit down to write down in Scots, it isn't it that easy? It doesn't flow out the pen necessarily. No. No, because all is, as soon as we go to the school, we're told that we have to write and speak in English. And it takes a wee bit of getting used to write in the way in which you'd speak. So I, it did take me a wee bit of time, but it's about getting the confidence. And also, because I work in loads of schools, when I go into schools and get to talking to Wayne's about, have you been told after years in Scots or Scots words or whatever, once they know that it's a real language and they've got dictionaries and they've got millions of books and hundreds of years of tradition in this language that millions of us speak, get the confidence. And once you get the confidence, Ali, you're absolutely right. That's when it comes out easier. And I've seen that much stuff for schools, not just in the Fries and Galloway, but right the length of Scotland and the islands and over Northern Ireland as well. A Wayne's, once they get that confidence, boom. And it's fantastic to see. Smashing, smashing. Well, we're hearing hundreds of questions coming in <laughs> through primary schools all across uh, mostly the southwest of Scotland, looks like. So first of all, Mrs. McClelland is letting us ken that her favourite Scotch word is sugar. <laughs> Aye, we, oh. we, get a sugar. That's basically my granddad's uh, recipe for fixing on him that isn't working. If your telly's not working, get a sugar. Car's oh. not working. <laughs> if your laptop's not working, get a sugar. One hundred percent, precisely that. Uh, Lucas, and if, uh, and if you're ch if you're chattering cold, if you're thin up, if you're freezing, oh, you make sugar a wee bit. So aye, you're ch or you're chattering. Aye, aye. Do you know these smashing verbs you can use in a hundred different situations? Oh. Um, yeah. Lucas. Lucas is what to turn things back round on you, Stuart. What's your favourite Scots word? I see Lucas is in Kirkibri, so hello, Kirkibri. And do you know what? Yesterday, I think it was, was St Cuthbert's Day. And St Cuthbert is who Kirkibri was named for. Kirk is the Scots word for church. Kirkibri is the old name for Cuthbert, so it's the church of Cuthbert. So happy Cuthbert's Day a day later, all. my pal's doing in Kirkibri. Yeah, you, you get poetry, you get language, you get history, the whole package here today, do you? You get the whole loads, and I've actually worked at Kirkcubri Primary as well, so um, it's a brilliant, brilliant school. Um, worked here um, about a year or two ago with the Waynes, absolutely magic. Favourite Scots word? Oh, that's a tough one. Which yours, Ali? Oh, hold on, didn't turn this round on me. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> you're, you're the one that's been put on the spot by Lucas. Right, I'll tell you my favourite Scots word, and it's also my favourite thing. So I've actually got, a, my favourite Scots word is also my favourite thing, a sneister. You can what a sneister is? Not the top of my head, no, tell us. Well, if you have a wee bar of chocolate, or a wee sweetie, or a wee fly, and something, and something nice between your meals that you're not supposed to have, a treat is a mm. wee sneister, so... Or sneister, as they as they call it over your way, maybe as well. So yeah, sneister, yeah. and who does they like the word dreech? If it, you look at the windy base days in Scotland, and it's dreech, especially in especially in Galloway. But no, sneister, I think. Aye, smashing, smashing. Well, there's your answer, Lucas. Um, Alex, also also faker Kubri, would like <laughs> to know what your favourite poem is. Well, hello, Alex. And, um, thanks for the question. My favourite poem. Well, when I was growing up, as I said, my mommy, Mima, told me a poem that she made up, or her pals made up, where she grew up in Muirkirk in Ayrshire many, many years ago. Oh, God, way back, 
a long time. And there was a lassie called Jenny Rennie. And there's a wee, the poem's in the book, actually. And Jenny fell one day, got up the countryside, and they wrote a wee poem about her. And it said, Jenny Rennie lost her penny in amongst the snow. And when she went to look for it, she lost her cell or all. <laughs> Smashing. Um, I, I, I like the fact that I like the fact that nobody had probably remember who Jenny Rennie was, and she might she's probably she's probably away. She's probably deep now. But somebody wrote a poem about her, and all these years later, will I remember Jenny Rennie because somebody wrote a poem about her in Scots? I think that's magic. Agreed. Agreed. Her legacy bides on in the oral, oral tradition of her area. We have Callan here. I didn't care what school Callan's fae, but Callan is spearing at you. Where do you get the ideas for your poems? Everywhere. I'm looking, I'm sat just now looking out the top of my laptop and I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the dreech weather, the wind, the smur, the rain, and I'm thinking, that tree looks like a big tatty bogle. Tatty bogle being a scarecrow. So I might just suddenly get an idea to write a poem about a tree looking like a scarecrow. It depends where you are. And I also like to write poems about people that I like or that I love or that I don't like or that I don't love. Just about what strikes me as interesting. And also sometimes, if there's a word in Scots that I particularly love, like say puddock earlier on, I think, oh, I've never written a poem about a puddock. So I love a puddock. Again, what I mean, it's toty and loud and loops about and it's green. I mean, I just made that up now, but you get what I mean? It, it's just anything that comes to mind. That's great. So we hear another in here. So cheers, Callum, for that in, and cheers to Alex, Lucas, Orla, Mrs. Oh. McClelland, uh, Judy, and I, I'm i awfully sorry, I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation, Judy in the Isle of Whithorn. 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 When she was younger, she used to go swimming in the harbour most days in the summer. Her mother used to give her a chittering bite to eat and warm her up when she came out the sea. Is that a, is that a thing you mind of yourself, Stuart? Oh, aye. And um, a chittering bit. Isle of Whithorn, of course, is down in the Machers in the west of Galloway. It's a great bit. I love Isle of Whithorn. Um, used to go camping there a lot. And I've actually swam in that very harbour. So I can't exactly what she's talking about. Aye. Um, and the Scots that they speak down in the Machers in the west of Galloway, again, is quite kind of similar to Ireland because we're no far away. Our, what they call the shuck. The shuck being a ditch, but it's what people in Galawa and people in Northern Ireland call the Irish Sea. So I can for a fact that they use the term chitter and bite over in Ulster in Northern Ireland as well. And the chitter and bite is just something that warms you up when you come out of the cold water. So you're mm. chittering, you're thin up, you're freezing. Oh, I need to get warm. I'll just have a wee snyster. See, there's a poem in that already. So a right. chitter and bite, is, that is actually one of my favourite, favourite, Phrases actually in Scots, it's brilliant to see that coming up. That, and I'm so just as I've said already, I bide in Dundee and fair about as far east in Scotland as you can get. And we'd I hate, we'd cut, we'd cry them chittery bites, and we'd get them when we're coming out of the swimming pool. We'd get to the vending machines and get ourselves a wee, a wee bit of chocolate as your chittery bite to give you that the warmth back into your body. A wee slicer, a wee slicer, exactly. Now I'm going to tap that word in my own vocabulary now. Um, <laughs> So last question for just now is for Jodie in Kirkubri. Uh, Kirkubri. Oh, just so you can, by the way, the Kirkubri primary, primary seven favourite Scots words. Some of their favourites are wabbit, keech, clarty, spiog, and toty. Some belters. <laughs> <well. laughs> so a toty spiog bite of a keech, right? Just make sure you duck if there's a spiog flea an hour and it tries to keech in your head. Aye. <laughs> Exactly. So uh, last question at the moment, uh, Jodie, again for Kukubri, would like to ken, what got you interested in writing poems? My mommy and the way we spoke and the words and the language. Scots is just such a great word, uh, uh, sorry, a great language. Now, as I said earlier, I mean, looking at the window here and it's dreech. If you speak in English, right, we all speak in English, but if you say that in English, then, oh, I'm looking out the window just now and it's fairly miserable. It's not quite the same as saying, God, I'm looking out the window just now, and it's Guy Dreek. Or you would say, uh, as you just said, Ali, you know, coming out of the swimming pool, and I'll just go to the I'll just go to the machine and get myself a small treat to heat myself up. <laughs> oh, let's go and get a chattering bite. 
It sounds more poetic. It sounds like more what it is. It sounds exciting. And, and the noises as well, the <laughs> and, the <laughs> and all the rest there. There's just something about it as a language that always made me think that it's more entertaining. And, and there's loads and loads of songs as well. Like, you know, you're kind of Ali Bali, Ali Bali B, sitting on your mammy's knee, greeting for a wee bobby to get some kilters candy. Wee songs like that growing up, you know, hearing all the time from my mommy and my daddy and just all the way we spoke and just that interest in language. It's almost like poetry itself, the language. And I think that's a great thing when poetry, when, when, when language comes almost ready made to be poems and the rhymes and the sound there, aye, brilliant. I love it. Still love it. Totally agree. And I'd say that's one of the great features of A Squatter of Bairn Rhymes, the book you've just uh, got out now that we've been talking about, is the uh, reading it out loud is far most of the fun comes from, the, the rhythms, the cadences. Like it reads Bonnie if you're just reading it quietly to yourself, but kind of it lends itself to being read and gaining all the big noises, the crunchy soons to it. It's quite a, <laughs> it's a very oral experience. Um, and I'd like to remind Abdi that's watching, you can buy this online for bookshop.wigtonbookfestival.com. That's the best place to buy your books for the Hail um, Big Dog Festival because it makes sure that all the money gings to the right places. Stuart, that's us out of questions and just about out of time, um, but extremely grateful for you taking the time to speak to us. Um, thanks very much to uh, Orla, to Callan, to Alex, to Lucas, to Mrs. McClelland, and to all the good folk at the uh, the Big Dog Children's Book Festival. And of course, a thank you to Bailey Gifford and Dumfries and Galloway Council Education and Learning for putting the whole thing together. Stuart, any, do you want to, I'd love it, just if you could finish us off with a poem. If, I, if you didn't mind me requesting, I've recently Ooh. had a flitter moose flit into my lum. G genuinely, a flat, a, a Biden an old flat in Dundee, and there is a flitter moose in my lum. No, for them that didn't care, what is a flitter moose? What is a lum? Give us the poem and we'll call it a day. Right, well, <clears throat> a flitter moose is a bat. And a, mo and a, a flitter moose, a f if you flitter, you flee. A moose is a mouse, so a wee fleeing moose is a flutter moose, and a lum is a chimney. So thanks, Ali. I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you like this thing. It's one of my favourites and all. And I think it's a, I don't think anybody's written a poem about a flutter moose or four some night. I'm dead chuffed, is a great word, but all chuffed to have written this. So flutter moose. The lum goes up, the lum goes down, the lum is in my living room. Inside the lum that's in my house, there bides a toty flitter moose. In winter, when the fire is lit and blazing, then it has to flit. In summer, when the fire is gain, the flitter moose comes back again. It's then he'll flee straight down the lum, sky hour and bite me on the bum, as if they say, ya chittering swine. Stop marking fires. Yon lum is mine. <laughs> what a way to finish a flitter moose biting from the on the booth. Stuart, once mayor, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Ali. And thanks to all the Wayne's teachers and everybody watching for their questions. Thanks to Anne. Thanks to Kenny as well for the tech stuff. And to Big Dog for having me along. It's been absolutely brilliant. Cheers.